Once again, today we come to your place of listening out in the radio listening audience. And you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church. We appreciate your presence here. We appreciate you that's tuned in out in the radio listening audience. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking, coming to you from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church. We welcome everyone. We welcome any visitor that's visiting with us today. We do have a few visitors. We're glad you're here. We want you to feel free and welcome to worship with us here at Northside. You in the radio listen audience, if you'll call a friend, have them to tune in, get the Northside Baptist Church Hour, then you'll be doing them a favor. You'll enjoy the choir, the special singing, the music, and I believe the preaching of God's Word. So we welcome you to do so. Now the tape today is tape number 297. I'm speaking on the subject, Joy Lost and Found. Joy Lost and Found. Turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 15 for the reading of God's Word today. You in the radio listening audience, if you'd like to have the tape today with music, singing, and message, then write in. We send them out to you for a gift of $3 each, and the gift is used to help take care of our radio expense. While you're writing in, write in and get a brochure on our proposed Holy Land tour. And look it over, you might want to go. We're planning a great tour for March of next year. And now is the time to get your name on the list and start making plans for the Holy Land tour. So we want you to write in and get a brochure and get the tape. And let us hear from you. If you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you be tuned in to this station where you're now listening, at 12 o'clock noon, you can get the daily broadcast Monday through Saturday. Some of you students just coming into Athens, you're looking for an old-fashioned, fundamental, Bible-believing, independent, missionary Baptist church where everybody is somebody. The Northside Baptist Church, with the end of your search for such church, and you can come in without knocking. And you can leave the same way, I hope. So pay us a visit. We're located beside Highway, the Dangerville Highway at the end of North Avenue. And we'd like to see you in our services. I want you to find the place, Luke chapter 15. And in the Schofield Reference Bible, you will find it on page 1096. Page 1096. A reading in the Reader's Digest, I believe, this week, where this young bride she was ironing her husband's trousers and not being uh, accustomed to too much of that type duty she burned a big hole in the trousers and when her husband came in and she t told him i just burned a hole in your trousers i was ironing them for you pressed them out for you and, and he said well don't don't mind that honey he said i have a Another pair said, when I bought that suit, I got two pair of pants. She said, that I know because I went and got the other pair and cut a piece out of them to patch this one I just burned. <laughs> and so there's always a way, you know, to solve a problem. I don't want to read too fleety, but I want to read several verses to base my message on today as I speak on joy lost and found. Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth on his shoulders, rejoicing, and when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligent till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends or neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, There is joy in the presence of the angel of God over one sinner that repenteth. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the young of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. 
And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with routeous living. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in war. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain and fill his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave up. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, him, him Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. While this my son was dead and is alive again, he was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. If you notice here in these parables, you find joy lost and found. I want you to keep that in mind as I move through these parables and mainly on the third one I read. Now joy is the issue, of course, included in these three parables. The lost sheep is carried back into the fold. The lost silver is put into the purse. The lost son is pardoned. The first one, the shepherd is suffering. The second one, the woman is seeking. The third one, the father is singing. In the first one, we have God the Son. In the second one, we have God the Spirit. In the third one, we have God the Father. The Savior is winning. The Spirit is wooing. And the Father is welcoming his son back. You keep that in mind. The lost sheep is out of the flock. The lost silver is out of the funds. The lost son is out of the family. The lost sheep is in a place of danger. The lost silver is in a place of darkness. And the lost son is in a place of distance. Now the devil is a travel agent of this world. And of course he always paints a beautiful picture for those that want to go out in the world. Those that want to leave mother and dad and go in, uh, into town and get them a job and get them a place to live, to get away from mother and dad so they can live like they want to live. You have some like that. Some may be justified in doing that when they reach a certain age. But you have too many young people a day in their teens to say, I want to get away from all restriction. I don't want mother and daddy telling me what to do. I want to get me an apartment, get me a job, get me an automobile. And get out on my own. One of the most dangerous steps any young girl could ever make. And parents need to realize that. Little teenage girls got no business going into town and getting them an apartment, a job, an automobile when they're very young. And don't know how to take care of themselves. And their parents did a dangerous thing when they let them do so, whether you like it or not. Now notice something else. He said there's fun out there. The devil told this young man, there's fun out there. He's a travel agency of the world. He said, young boy, if you'll leave your daddy and leave home, there's fun out there for you. You can have a good time. You can go when you get ready. You can keep late hours if you desire. You can come in when you get ready. And mother and daddy won't be telling you what you can do and when you can come in, when you can leave. He said, there's freedom out there. He said, young man, if you go out there, you have all the freedom you want. You won't have to worry about any restrictions whatsoever. You're all on your own. You're young men of your own. You do what you please and live it up. Just go ahead. Help yourself. Have a good time. And he said, you know, young man, there's a lot of friendship out there. You know, your daddy's old fogey and he lives for God and, and he's kind of strict. And you might not have too many friends here, son, but I guarantee you, if you get out there in the world, there's a multitude of them out there. And you'll have friends galore. You'll have friends coming from east, west, north, and south. And you'll just have a good time. And what you need to do, son, is leave your old dad and mama and get out there on your own and really live it up. And if you ever decide you ought to get right with God and 
Yeah, and get ready to go to heaven. You got plenty of time. Wait until you grow old. And then you can do that. See, the devil sings that song and tells young people those things. Now we have in verse 11 the straying son. And then we have the staying son. The straying son and the staying son. And they're both lost according to the scriptures. Now the straying son began by saying, give me in verse 12. He said, give me. You have people today with their hands out saying, give me, give me. I want, I want uh, what's becoming to me. Give me. And he said, give me. He did not want the father's presence. He wanted the father to give him something. And he did not want his, the presence of the old man around. And he had lust in his heart before he had dust on his feet. He sat there at home. He said, now, if I can get out shut in the world, they're having a good time out there. They're dancing and and gambling and drinking and having a ball. And if I can get out there with them, then I can have a good time. And deep down in his heart, he had lust in his heart before he had dust on his feet. Now, lust in the heart will bring about dust on the feet many times as to the sorrow of the person that gets the dust on his feet. Now, he began with desire, and then it ended up with a demand. He desired to leave home, and he had that desire in his heart. He brooded over it, no doubt, from time to time. And then it, we find it ended up in a demand. He went to his father. He said, now, I want my inheritance. I want what is due me, what is coming to me. I want it right now. No doubt his father said, now, son, you're young, and what you need to do is just wait, and there's plenty of time, and you'll get what's coming to you. No, I want it now. And he demanded then. He wanted it right then. You know, we're living in a day It's quite different now. When I was a young boy, when I was a young boy, I walked many times three miles to school each day and three miles back. And we didn't have a bus to ride in those days. And then finally buses came along and people had a chance to ride a bus. And so they rode a bus for a while. But now our young people, when they reach about age 16, they don't want to ride that bus. That bus is not quite good enough. They want a car of their own. Other young people have automobiles, so they want an automobile. And they keep fussing on mom and daddy until they get one. And nothing wrong in that really if they will do right and act right and drive their automobile right and not get out and drink and get on dope and race and try to break the speed limit and get out there and endanger their lives and grieve their parents. That's why the problem is young people when they reach age 16 and get an automobile, they ought to appreciate it enough that they'd honor their parents, drive it right, act right and never drink, never get out and race and never get out and act a fool. You ought to respect your parents enough and appreciate enough that they let you have an automobile that you wouldn't do a thing like that. Yet you have some that'll do that and many of them, you know where they end up? Over in the cemetery. They end up in the cemetery killed in an automobile wreck. Now that happens many times to young people. Young people drinking and driving don't go together. Speeding just don't work for young people. It'll run your insurance up. It'll cause you to lose your driver's license and you have to depend on others to carry you around. It's just a, a, a stupid thing to do, really, when you get down to it. If you have a good cause, a young person, use some good judgment and common sense and honor your parents and do that which is right. And then you'll come out, or if not, you're going to end up and you're going to be the loser. This young boy demanded. Now, declaring his independence and indifference, he made a departure. Declaring his independence. Nobody tells me what to do. His indifference toward his home, he made his departure. It ends out of funds in verse 14, out of food in verse 16, out of friends in verse 16. What an ending for this boy. Ending up without funds, ending up without food, ending up without friends. He is a waster and not a worker. If he'd have stayed at home and worked like he should have, then he wouldn't have got into this trouble. But he's a waster. You have a lot of people today that are wasters. They don't appreciate what they have. They don't appreciate what their parents do for them. Back when I was a young boy and walked three miles to school each way, six miles a day, I'd have been glad to have a scooter to rode on and walk on one foot and had one foot on the scooter. But I didn't even have a scooter, not even a pass skates, let alone a bicycle. If I'd have had a bicycle, I'd have thought I had a Cadillac. 
but I had to walk in forth, back and forth to school every day. I'm not grumbling about it. We was poor in those days. Everybody just about was poor in those days. Back in the Hoover days, some of you old timers remember that. And so I'm not grumbling about it. I'm trying to make a comparison to show you how you ought to appreciate what you have. A lot of people don't do it. And so he's a waste and not a worker. Now you have the, the germ of sin uh, here in this man's heart and mind. And then you have the self-will. There's the old germ of sin there. And then comes the self-will. And self-will is rebellion. The Antichrist is a man of self-will. And we're living in the days of the spirit of the Antichrist today. Self-willed people want to do what they want to do. Nobody tells me what to do. Young people say, I know more than my parents. And I want to do my thing. And, and they're self-willed. Now the goal of sin, uh, the goal of sin is separation from the Father. So he wanted to do his thing, self-willism, and separated from his Father. Here we see sin based, beguiling, blinding, binding, and bankrupting. This boy is getting into trouble. His fortune goes and famine comes, we see here in the scripture. His wasteful, his willful waste brings woeful want in verses 12 and 14. He went from wealth to want and then to woe, according to the Bible. The more he had, the less he wanted what he had. And the further he went, the less he wanted to be where he was. This boy was getting in a predicament, like a lot of young people today. They want, and then they find out that's not what they want. And more they get, the less they're satisfied with what they have. And we need to realize that. He joined himself to a citizen of that country, and went in to sw feed swine. He joined the swine's club. Now these little clubs, fraternities and lodges and whatnot, it's not going to solve anybody's problem. All the blood of Jesus Christ will do that. Getting right with God will do that. And so this boy joins a swine club and starts feeding hogs. Dr. Lee used to tell about when he was a young preacher and had to drive many miles to preach. And one Saturday night he's on his way to this community where he was to preach. His car broke down. And so he had nowhere to stay. He saw a neighbor's house. He went up to the old mountain home there and asked if he could stay all night and fix his car the next day. The man said, be glad for you to stay all night here. And so they went in. The man said, we'll just have to feed you such as we have. Dr. Lee said, that's all right. And they sat down at the table and started eating milk and bread out of the bowl there. And they talked at the table and something kept rooting his leg. He looked down and it was a pig just kept rooting the old man's leg and the preacher's leg. And he complained to the owner of the house and the pig. He said, this, um, this pig here must not like me. He said, no, doctor. He said, that it's not that he don't like you. He says, that, that pig knows you're eating out of his bowl and he doesn't like that. Now this man, he goes down and he eats out of the hog trough down there uh, the, and eats what the swine eats. Now he's in a bad predicament. And he went from wealth to war and to woe, joined himself to the citizens of that country to feed swine. The crowd that cheered him on now begins to crucify him. That gang he started running with, that bunch he thought was his friends, as long as he had a little money to spend and maybe uh, good transportation and so forth, they, they said, I'm your friend. And they cheered him on. And now they're crucifying the poor boy. They're laughing at him out there in the hog pen as he eats a hog a, a meat out there, or other food, hog food, and eat the same stuff the swine had to eat. And so they're making light of him. Now you should stay with the sheep and not the swine. The boy had a chance to stay back home with the sheep and he, he chose to go join the swine. Now some of you young people listen to me today. You're out there fooling around with the swine, fooling around the hog pen when you ought to be with God's sheep and God's little lambs. That's where God wants you to be. That's where mother and dad wants you to be. Stay away from the swine. They're not going to help you. They'll turn and rend you. They have no respect for God and no respect for you or your family. And you need to realize that. And he went out to find satisfaction, but found that sa that, that, that satisfies not. He said, when I leave the father's house, oh, how satisfied I'll be. And then he found out what he found satisfied not. Now you see my a topic here, my subject. You see here where the joy is lost and then joy is found. I want you to notice that in the scriptures here. And sin begins with self-determination, but, but it ends up with detradation and degradation. Uh, so we see here that this man here went away and he had the determination 
but it ended up with degradation. This man left home. He was determined to go out, have a good time, make it good, strike it rich, and then really eat, eat of the great things the world has to offer, but it didn't, didn't turn out that way. And then he's now having a conversation and a sober realization. Notice that in verse 17. He's talking to himself. There may be a time when you're going to talk to yourself when you find out that you're fouled up. You're going to say, why did I do this? I've acted a fool. I've, I've played the fool. I should have known better. And you find yourself talking to yourself if you don't stay on the right track. You go around and fool around with the swine of this world. And as they grunt, you find yourself talking to yourself. That you shouldn't do. You ought to be able to talk to your family and talk to your good friends and talk to the sheep and, and not to the goats and the swine. Now he comes to himself and remembering and misery brought him to himself. Now he comes to himself, he remembers something and then he's miserable in verse 17 and of course remembering these things brought him to himself. He got to thinking, now what a fool I am. I had a good home I had a good mother and daddy. I had good friends. I, I was uh, well fed, well clothed, and I had it made. And now he remembers all of this, and the more he thought about it, the more miserable he became. Now you're not going to get people straightened out until they wind up in misery. That is, if they're prone to go on the downward road and head toward the hog pen. Sometimes you can't stop them. And you might as well let them go ahead and wind up in the hog pen and in misery. Then they might turn and want to come back home. A lot of people never look up to hit rock bottom and see they can't go down any deeper. So the only way to turn is up and they turn up. And that's what Jonah did. And so we see here he came to himself remembering uh, and misery brought him to himself. Consideration is the first step to conversion. He realized he had sinned and it was called it what God called it. He didn't say, now nah, I made a little mistake. I'm all right. I'm not too bad after all. No, he said, I have sinned. Now you got to admit your sin. You got to confess your sin. You just can't call it mistakes and say, well, it's not so bad after all. If it's sin, it's sin. And he called it sin. Now that we have the selfness of sin, he said, give me in verse 12. That's the selfness of sin. Give me, he said in verse 12. And then we have the sinfulness of sin, Routus living in verse 13. And then we have the suffering of sin, he's in want, verse 14. And then we have the shame of sin, he's down there feeding swine in verse 15. And then we have the sentence of sin, he said, I perish, I perish in verse 17. He does not deny his relationship to the Father in verse 17 and 9 through 19. He does deny that, but look at the predicament he's in. He's troubled. He's in trouble down at the hog pen. And he realizes that and he, be in, he begins to do something about it. He begins by requesting his rights. In verse 5, he said, give me. He said to his father, I want my rights. I see people that once in a while on TV, they would work in a pie factory sampling pies. They would knock the flour off the end of their nose. They're so infernal lazy. And they've been on welfare so long. And then if you do a little something they think that the government shouldn't do to help them, I want my rights. Give me my rights. And don't know what their rights is. Beloved, we need to realize that our rights is to look to God and, and serve God and then work for a living and not depend on welfare to keep us up when we're able to work and squawk around about our rights. God help us realize. This boy said, I want my rights. Give my rights, he said in verse 5. He ends by resigning his rights in verse 19. When he comes back home, he resigns his rights here in verse 19. You know what he did? He said, make me one of the old hired servants. Now before he left, he wanted his rights. I get so sick and tired of lazy people that always want their rights and not willing to work. Now he resigns he as he said, uh, just make me one of the old hide servants around the house. And by the way, this is not even a message that disturbed me. You know what happened? You say, preacher, what? This fellow Potts down here in Scythe County ought to have been burned years ago in the electric chair. 
committed one of the most terrible crimes that had been committed in the state of Georgia, killed a poor man trying to help him when he was begging to let him live and raise his young ones. He cussed and said, somebody else will raise your young ones, blow his brains out. He sent us to the death, and these, these are sin-loving, crime-loving judges overturned that conviction. Yesterday, he, somebody got a pistol to him. He got out, and uh, then he took uh, one of the, 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 the guards hostage and then, got, then left the prison. And the, the, host, the guard ought to feel good to be alive today because he's a cold-blooded murderer. They shot him a time or two and kind of skinned him a little bit. And uh, then uh, finally caught him and put him back in prison. Now, when you play with a rattlesnake, sooner or later that rattlesnake is going to bite you. And they've been playing with that man for too many years. And he's going to fool around and kill some of them guards and kill somebody else. And those judges, those crime-loving judges and our judicial system is going to be responsible and going to have the blood on their hands of every evil that man does. It's all been electrocuted years ago. It should have been burned years ago along with that crowd that killed the all-day family. And they're playing with them like a bunch of rattlesnakes. And they're going to get bit one of these days. And those three stooges that overturned that conviction called themselves judges are going to have the blood on their hands. You tell them I said so if you get a chance to do so. God help us. That's not my message. I won't charge you anything for that. Yeah, I'll just let you have that on the credit. Now, we need to realize that this man here, uh, he, he became um, in trouble, and he, he resigned his rights in verse 5. He ended up resigning his rights, verse 19. He is lost by running from the Father. He is found by returning to the Father. He, had he not come to himself, he would not have come to the Father. He had to come to himself first, and he came to the Father. He had to come to pigs in poverty, or he would not have come to peace and plenty. He received no rebuke from the Father. Uh, you know, like Jesus uh, saw the woman taking adultery when that uh, crowd of fellows guilty of the same thing tried to condemn her. And Jesus said, they without sin let them cast the first stone. And that, that gang of men that is guilty of committing the same kind of sin walked off like a bunch of dogs that broke up a hen's nest. And Jesus said, now why is thine accusers? Uh, he said, no man, Lord. He said, I don't accuse ye either. Uh, Jesus received of the tender heart, forgave her of her sins, said, go sin no more. Now the father here receives the son back in that manner. He receives him back. He receives no rebuke from the father. And the father shows expression with eyes of mercy. The father showed feet of mercy, bowels of mercy, and lips of mercy. He left the father's house, but he never left the father's heart. Now you may go out here and sin. If you're a child of God, God still loves you and God forgive you. You may go out here and dishonor your parents and break their hearts, but you'll never leave their heart. They may let you know they disapprove of what you do, but you don't leave their heart. You steal on their heart and trampling on their heart when you do wrong. Now this boy left his father's house, but he didn't leave his father's heart. Now the father expresses forgiveness even before he confesses. Boy didn't have a chance to confess of his sins. His father already forgave him before he had a chance to confess. He said, I'll go to my father. And, but the father ran to meet him. He is coming up the dusty road and ragged and, and long beard, no doubt, matty hair, uh, barefooted and uh, filthy and hungry. And he was walking back home. A rare young man in many respects. But his father saw him and ran to him and fell on his neck and kissed him. He came slowly with the burden of sin. The father came swiftly with blessings. And there the father began to bless him. That's the way God does business. That poor sinner comes shamefully, slowly toward God with a bowed head. And then God comes swiftly and quickly with blessings that he might save him and help him. He is recognized by the Father, first of all. Secondly, he's received by the Father. Thirdly, he is ringed by the Father. The Father put a ring on his finger. And then he is robed by the Father. And he's, then he's restored by the Father. And now he rejoices with the Father. And so he comes back home. Man, he'd gotten into trouble. He knew it all. He had all the answers. His parents couldn't tell him anything. He had learned so much at school until uh, he knew more than they did. Like the man one time called his 12-year-old son aside and said, Son, uh, you're getting up to age now. Won't you sit down? I want to talk with you about the real facts of life. The young man said, Dad, what do you want to know? Well, many of them take that attitude now. We need to realize that when people get to the place where they know more than their parents, they know too much. They've gone too far. 
They deceive themselves. And they don't realize that. They realize it someday when it's too late. But they make a lot of trouble and bring a lot of heartaches before that time comes. And so he's recognized by the Father. He's received by the Father. He's ringed by the Father. He's robed by the Father. He's restored by the Father. He's rejoiced with the Father. Here we have rags exchanged for a robe. And the Father put it on him. The Father said, get those rags off. Let me put a robe on this boy. And he put the best robe he had there in the wardrobe. Here we have shoes put on him. Servants in those days went barefooted. Sons wore shoes. And he had shoes put on his boy. This is my son. He lost his joy. And now he's finding it again. He's returned to full sonship. So you lose joy and you find joy. The lost sheep was lost. And there was joy when it was found. The corn was lost. There was joy when it was found. The son was lost. There was joy when he came back home to the father. And so we see here that the, he feasted by the father. He's now returned from misery to merriment. God is more than a lawgiver. We see here his light, love, life, grace, and peace. God received this boy back. The father did. He's a type of God. And if you're listening to me today in the radio listening audience, you have gone out in the sin. You have left the father's house. You have disobeyed your parents. You have been mean. Why don't you get on your knees? Get right with God. Come back into fellowship with God. Get back into fellowship with your family. You're headed out of this world. It may be quicker than you think. You know how soon God's going to call you away. And you need to be in good standing with God. Good standing with your family. And your fellow man as far as possible. Yes, we see here lost joy. And then joy restored. If I'm speaking to someone in this building in the radio listening audience, you one time had real joy, real peace in your heart. You enjoyed going to church. You loved it. But now you grumble and murmur and complain when you have to go to church. You've lost that joy. You need to get it back. It's not God's fault. It's your own fault. You need to get that joy back. It'll come back. David said, God, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. If you lost the joy, it can be restored. You haven't gone too far, but what God can't restore that joy back, make you happy again. Put that desire in your heart to go to the house of God. Put desire in your heart to want to do the things of God. And put desire in your heart to serve Him. God can do that. He worketh in us to will and to do of His good pleasure. And just get before God like this boy did. He said, I've sinned against heaven in thy sight. No more words to be called thy son. Make me one of the hide servants. Did the father make him a hide servant? No. He showed him he's the son. You're not a hide servant. You're my son. I'm putting shoes on your feet. You walk for me. Putting a ring on your finger. You're in a place of authority. I'm putting clothes on your back. Your sins have been covered. I'm giving you a good feast. Now you can enjoy the good things. Let's get busy and enjoy them. That's exactly what God wants you to do today. If you've lost it, you can find it again. Bad to lose things makes it even better to find it again. You can find what you've lost, and God wants you to do that, and you can if you want to bad enough, and I hope you have that desire. You've listened well today. Stand to your feet, please. Dear Father in heaven, as we preach today about lost joy and find it once again, may somebody, as a result of this message today, Find that joy they once had in serving thee. Use the message. Speak to hearts, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Now as Debbie plays for us, listen to me closely. If you're here today and you have lost that joy, why don't you come down here and get it back? Why don't you do it? It's up to you. You can do it. If you're here and you've never been saved and find peace and joy in Christ, you can't find elsewhere. If you're here and you're looking for a church home, I don't know why you'd find a better church in Northside. You might find a better preacher, but not a better church. Why don't you obey God? If you want to come by letter, by statements of Kennedy for baptism, would you come? While Debbie plays, won't you come? While we wait, how about it? Come on now, if God is speaking to your heart.